Today I'm going to show you how I generated over 1,000 euros in sales with my SEO and Google Ads dropshipping store. I achieved these figures in less than six months from scratch and documented the entire process of creating this store on my Twitter account and even filmed the whole process which I share in my case study training. In this video I'm going to share as much value as possible with you so stay tuned until the end because you're going to find some never before seen tips that I can guarantee you won't found anywhere else. We'll see how to find niches to work on with our strategy. We'll also look at two totally free sales channels that nobody talks about. We'll see how to launch Google Ads, especially Google Shopping. We'll also look at the power of Shopify market to attack the international market. We'll also take a look at the figures actually achieved with this strategy because it's all very well to see a 100,000 euro dashboard but what's the real benefit behind it and all this in total transparency. Without further ado, let's meet on my Shopify store to show you that I started the store in June, July and it quickly took off in November, December reaching 50,000 euros in sales in a single month in December. Now, it's running at around 15,000 euros in monthly sales in the quieter months. On an annual basis, we're looking at around 200 to 250,000 euros of sales on a fairly stable and sustainable basis, given that we're running on SEO and Google Ads. For this presentation, let's go back to my Twitter account where I share the whole of my career, as many values as possible. I've collected on my notion that I put in the description. You can click directly on the link. You don't even have to enter your email address or anything. Basically, you have all the major tweets or my entire journey from scratch. Here, for example, you can see my first tweet where I explained that I found a new store niche with great potential. I explained that I bought partial match domain and it was on the US market with a very high search volume. And even before I launched into this niche, I was already very confident. I knew I was going to make over 10,000 a month with this site and I made a thread to explain why I was so confident and how I knew this niche was easy to work on. There I explained that all you had to do to find your niche was go to SEMrush. I filter the keywords on which the Amazon marketplace is positioned and I filter them to find transactional keywords that are not too difficult to position in SEO. To give you a concrete example go to amazon.far Click on view details and add the filters I shared in my tweet. You can find them here. Top 3, 0, 30% KD, commercial and transactional intent. And here, just look for interesting niches. For example, you can see that there are plenty. Pacifier clip if you have a store in the baby sector. Freestanding hammocks. As soon as we find interesting keywords, we can click on them to see if there are competitors who are already well positioned and if it's worth taking the plunge or not. Here, we typically have Amazon first. We can see that the number of backlinks is fairly low and specialized sites like Tropical Hammock are currently positioned fairly low. We'll have to see how long they've been trying to position themselves. We also have Hammock du Monde, which are not marketplaces, but specialized sites. So if we want to get started, we'll try to compete with them and see if we can do better than them so that in the long term, we can position ourselves ahead of Amazon. Then we can see the potential of the niche. To do this, for example, we can look at prices. As you can see, hammocks are priced at $230. We can find them on AliExpress at $25, $26. So we have a very good margin to see if it's really delivered correctly, with good quality or not. But otherwise, we can try to find good suppliers and then add the right products to our store. That's where the margins are. That's another competitor. The average basket is over 100 euros. So if we have enough products, long tail products to position our queries in SEO, it can be worth it. After that, it's not enough just to analyze a single keyword. We'll try to look at the niche in its entirety. Are there other types of hammocks? Is there as little competition? Do we have the products available to sell them, etc.? Here, for example, you can search for hammock to see if there are other interesting keywords on which Amazon is positioning itself. Maybe keywords from other collections, like here, inflatable hammock, with two search volumes, cat hammock, window cat hammock, etc. There's a lot of interest here. There are a lot of interesting keywords here. And now, if you can't afford to pay for keyword analysis tools like SEMrush, you should know that you have alternatives. Of course, sometimes it won't be as advanced. For example, you can go to Ubersuggest and do some free daily research. There's also the Google Keyword Planner, 
which is a free tool from Google that also gives estimates. Niche research is very important. It can take a long time to find the right nugget, but sometimes even before you launch, you can't be sure whether it's really something crazy or not. So don't hesitate to launch lots and lots of nuggets quickly, and then you can find your nugget that's going to make you a lot of money afterward. Here, I was sharing that in less than two weeks, I would managed to make my first organic sale, and it was totally free. We'll come back to how I made that sale a little later. It's very simple. There's not much to do except create as much content as possible. This was another tweet in which I explained that what I like in my niches is everything to do with clothes, decorations and jewelry. These are niches where you can easily make good margins with good perceived values. It's also easy to attack these niches from different marketing angles with different universes and targeted niches so you can easily position yourself in SEO and Google Ads without too much competition. For example, if I tell you I like clothes, you can use the same strategy as before. By looking for niches where Amazon is positioned, as it's a non-specialized marketplace, and they sometimes manage to position themselves in the top three on certain queries. For example, if we type dress to stay with the theme of clothing and come to position ourselves with a specialized boutique, Google will try to promote us and sometimes position us before Amazon in the top two or top one and that's where we'll make the most money. Here, for example, we've got lots of niches that stand out when you type in dresses on which the site is positioned. We have princess dresses, short dresses, gothic dresses, disco dresses. The trick is to find the nugget. For example, make a theme that's all about gothic clothing. Here, we've got everything that's princess themed. We'll see, in fact, a bathrobe. After that, don't stop at the first keyword you find. Then, you have to look deeper to see if there really is a niche with potential and not just a single keyword. Find a theme that doesn't have too much competition, that has a good search volume, and try to position yourself on that. In reality, it's up to you to look. There's no secret to it, you just have to dig. Sometimes, you'll find keywords you'd never have imagined. That's when sometimes you can find really good niches. To continue, I had made a recap of the first month of work on my store where I had purchased the domain name, created the store, added collections and product. I generated my first sale thanks to the content I added. Then I set my goals. Here I'm explaining how I made my first sale simply thanks to Shopify's marketplace shop for merchants on which you'll be able to list yourself. Let's click on the thread to go into a bit more detail. Don't pay too much attention to the image. It's a bit clickbait to get impressions and gain visibility. But in concrete terms, Shop is a marketplace, a mobile application on which users can, as in the video, connect and search to buy products. It's an application that will list a whole host of stores, Shopify only. Here, for example, if you type period panty, there's a huge number of Shopify stores selling this type of product and they're listed directly on this marketplace. That's how I generated my first sale. The customer came to the platform looking for a product and by chance I was positioned at the top of the search results and that generated my first sale. Listing on this application isn't very complicated. In fact, sometimes if your Shopify store has been around for a while, you're already listed there automatically. But on the whole, all you need is a Shopify account and Shopify payment, which is important for activating ShopPay. It's their in-app payment system. Have less than 1% of disputes. And that's it. After that, in the meantime, I think rules might change because it's been a while, six months since I made that tweet. It's possible that the conditions will evolve. All you have to do is download the application from the Shopify app store. And on the user side, on the customer side, if you search on the Shopify app store, you'll find the application. So just to show you, here we are on the App Store and we have a mobile application with four eight stars. And frankly, it's getting a lot of downloads. That's mainly in the States. In France, on this market, you won't get many sales. It seems to be really well known in the States though. Frankly, if you're in this market, you might as well take advantage of it since it's totally free. To continue with the other totally free acquisition channel, set up Google free listing. As you can see, shortly after creating my store, I set this up and within a month, it was generating over 20 clicks a day. But you have to be really careful if you want to do Google Shopping or Google Ads. You have to be careful when you try to list yourself on the Google Merchant Center to appear in free listing to have a perfect site before making this request. Because if you don't respect the rules, you'll be banned, you'll get a rejection. Then you're going to have to ask for a review of your store in order to be accepted. And sometimes that gets complicated because you're certainly not going to comply with the points they're asking for. Respect the points they ask for, the essential rules to be accepted on the Merchant Center. In this tweet, I haven't gone into detail yet, but normally I think I've done a tutorial thread on how to get accepted. There you go, GMC setup tutorial. This goes to show I really do share all the value on Twitter. Click on the thread in question and I've explained it again. All you have to do is search for the Google channel 
log in correctly, add your Google Merchant Center account and wait to be listed. Then you have to make sure that you have all the means of contact in your footer, whether it's an email address, a telephone number, a visible physical address, etc. You have to make sure that all the means of contact are listed. You also need to make sure that all means of payment are correctly displayed. For example, if you display the PayPal badge, make sure that you accept PayPal on your checkout, otherwise you may be rejected. You also need to make sure that you don't abuse promotions. It's well known that dropshippers like to run false promotions and so on. We avoid all that crap and try to be as straightforward and professional as possible. Good branding, well-worked collection pages, correct product pages and no pages that lead to empty site or pages with errors. To give you a concrete example of what Google free listing is all about, it's actually product sheets that display like this on the tab. I can't even find it. Products, it's changed. Before there was the shopping tab, but Google does a lot of testing, sometimes adding stuff, sometimes removing it. Now on the whole, it's your product listings that will be listed here, totally free of charge. While some people pay Google shopping fees to be displayed, will be able to take advantage of this and generate clicks. Knowing that in general on this kind of product, when we see images and get clicks, we have a higher conversion potential for our prospect, for our visitor. So that was the little thread on setting up the Google Merchant Center, which is really powerful. And then I'll come back to the subject of image optimization, which is essential because here too, we'll be able to get more free clicks by positioning ourselves on Google Images. Here, for example, we were on products, but sometimes there's Google Images here. If we work well on our SEO, if we optimize our images with good product titles, good alt text, we can hope to be positioned on Google Images in the top positions. And when we get clicks, likewise, they'll lead back to the site. And then that can help us get more conversions. What I'm saying in this tweet is that I've been using an application for over four years now, and it's always been top notch. However, it's not free and it lets you directly optimize all your images based on the title of your product. And so for all the images in your product file, it will add the alt text of this title and it will also rename all the files .jpeg, .webep, etc. by renaming them with the title of the product and therefore maximize their positioning on these keywords. It will also compress the size of the images to load faster, which will improve performance on your site and therefore optimize natural referencing. So I've already shared with you three ways to get your first sales organically. Shopify's Marketplace Shop, Google Free Listing, and Google Images. In general, these are the channels through which you'll get your first organic sales because they're the most actionable and the easiest to position initially. Next comes basic SEO on search keywords, but we'll come back to that a little later with concrete results on my figures. Already, with the three methods I've shown you, it's enabled me, you see here, to make a little tweet in July, knowing that I'd started the site in mid-June. A month later, I was already generating almost one sale a day. As you can see, I've made sales on five consecutive days. All this, one month after the creation of my store. So, what I'm sharing with you is concrete. It really works, and it's not going to end anytime soon. Throughout this video, I'm going to show you valuable tips that I really apply to all my stores. So don't hesitate to drop a like, comment, or even join the Discord community. The link is in the description and we continue with the rest of the video. Here, we're in a monthly recap. You'll see that every month I do a recap of the store. Case studies, we see the numbers, what I've put in place, and so on. You can click on the thread if you want more details, but now let's move on. For the time being, we only had free traffic, and in August, I started setting up Google Shopping. When you start Google Ads, you can take advantage of the 400 euro offer if you're ready to spend 400 euro in less than two months. That's what I recommend to all my students. Every time, I tell them to go through the offer because it's still pretty huge. You spend 400 hours in total, you'll have 400 hours of advertising spend. In general, if you manage to generate 800 hours in sales, You'll be well on your way to break even if you have good margins on your products and you haven't done any crap on your site. Here, I shared some examples of SEO dropshipping niches. You can find the document on my Discord, I think, too. Or send me a DM, don't hesitate. I'll send you the Notion document if necessary. Anyway, that's when I set up Google Shopping. For the month of August, as I started Google Shopping, 
I already had very good results. I had achieved over a thousand euros in sales over 10 days of advertising. And as you can see, there were 0 010 CPCs. As a result, for each click by a visitor, I only spent 10 cents. So really, I pay almost nothing at all. In general, we estimate a 1% conversion rate. So in this case, with an advertising spend of 4 euros, I had around 1,400 visitors. And with a conversion rate of 1%, i.e. one conversion for every 100 visitors, we end up with an average of 14 or even 15 conversions, thanks to 150 euros of advertising. As a result, we end up with around 15 orders, thanks to advertising. I'd say 4 or 5 orders organically and 20 orders, which enabled me to generate over a thousand euros in sales between the 9th and 15th of August. That's an average shopping cart of 50 euros. Exactly the same kind of figure. Same as earlier, PDF, where I share strategies for SMS and email marketing, because as soon as you're willing to pay for visitors with advertising, you have to make sure you convert them as much as possible. Here, typically, I'm sharing my email marketing templates for abandoned shopping carts. And this is really important. As soon as the customer has arrived at the checkout and hasn't finalized their order, it's up to you to do everything you can to convert them. And here there are a number of solutions. You can send text messages, run promotions, make a better offer. I do it by email, for example. Typically, I send four emails to my customer. 15 minutes after they've left the site, if they haven't bought even though they've left their details, I contact them with a little email saying order confirmed. And then, straight away, he receives this email. He doesn't understand he clicks because he hasn't confirmed his order. It's a little email that's going to force him to click because he wants to see what I'm putting in because he hasn't bought anything. And in fact, I'm just going to tell him your order is reserved. You can finalize it by entering your payment details. Then four hours later, if he still hasn't paid, I'll send him a reminder with a promotional code to help him finalize the order. 24 hours later, I remind him that the promo code is still available, but only for a limited time. If he doesn't use it, the promo will expire. Then, 48 hours later, the last email. I say, okay, I'll double the promotion for you. And then, on the other hand, you buy. Otherwise, it'll be too late. And that's it. Anyway, that was marketing. Of course, there are lots of strategies. Maybe it's a bit too aggressive for some, but I apply it every time, and it works. It allows you to convert quite a few customers. Here's a little summary of month three. I made 3,000 euros in August when I started advertising. So, in general, I also talk about monthly profits after deducting expenses. We'll come back to this, I think, a little later. Here, I'm showing that the shop application is working very well. It's bringing in quite a few sales. It generated over $1,500 for the month of August Month 3 summary, as I said, now I'll go into a bit more detail. I made 1,500 euros net profit, and that's where the evolution of SEO comes in. As soon as I started to put in a bit of paid traffic with Google Ads, it generated more visitors. It boosted my SEO keywords, and I started to get more SEO traffic. By the way, now we're talking about SEO. I set myself up for on-site content creation with descriptions of working collections, product descriptions and product titles that respond to search intent, which is essential, of course, image optimization. And then you have to think about doing everything off-site because very often people who want to do SEO boutiques often forget about this step, even though it's just as important, in fact. You've created quality content. Now you have to give power to this content so that Google visits your site, finds that you're someone it can trust, that there's authority and notoriety in your field. This can be achieved through backlinks, or through traffic via your social networks. There are quite a few solutions, but you mustn't hesitate to make backlinks. It's often overlooked because, in general, those who set up SEO dropshipping stores do so because they think it's free traffic, often because they don't have much money. In the end, you shouldn't hesitate to buy links. There are platforms where you can buy quality links at low prices. I like eReferrer. After that, of course, you have to get quality links, if you can, in your theme, or that give you power. Everyone has their own net linking strategy, that's what I do. I simply buy or I trade with friends because afterwards, once your SEO is well set up, you see I was starting to get more than a thousand monthly visitors totally free of charge on transactional keywords with a strong intent to buy. 
that was september okay at the beginning of september i launched my ecom escape training course it's a short course where i share my strategy in a more concrete way for beginners i recorded a more advanced version of this training I also filmed the whole process of creating my store. You can really see everything from A to Z, the site, how I made the logo, adding products, the supplier. I'm really sharing everything transparently. I'm also sharing the positions. You can see that on keywords with quite a lot of search volume. In less than three months, I was starting to have very good positions. I was top four, top three. That's the time you need to start ranking well in SEO if you've done your work correctly and there's not too much competition. Then, here's another trick I've shared quite a bit, hyper powerful, is to attack the international market. Shopify market lets you do just that. It's basically, it's an integrated application that you simply add to your settings, allowing you to translate your site into your target language. On top of that, it'll automatically set the right currency when it geolocates your visitor. For example, if it's a guy in the States, it'll set the currency to dollars. And when the customer pays, it'll really pay in dollars. It's not just the display that's changed. Likewise, if he's in France, for example, it'll be displayed in euros. I've shown you the whole process of setting up this Shopify market, which I'll go into in detail in this thread. You can click on it. I'm really showing it step by step. I give maximum value on it, setting up the domain, setting up the subfolder, how to translate, with which app localizes here, which is Shopify's Translate and Adapt app. And then it's up to you to translate. It's best to do it manually, of course. You can also do it automatically, but it doesn't work very well if you don't use the right keywords. In my case, it helped me get traffic in Germany. We'll come back to this later. I'll show you the results. Right now, we're still in the States. I'm showing that I've finally reached the top three on my main keyword in less than 100 days. Then here, I show that after two months of ad spending, I've got my offer of the 400 euro offered by Google Ads. Of course, I spent more than 400 euro as it was profitable. Here, I'm sharing the tutorial on how to set up Google Shopping campaigns, adding conversion with Google Analytics. All this is to be listed on Google Free Listing, the free strategy I presented at the beginning of the video. And I've shared it all on my YouTube account, plain and simple. And what's more, these are videos I've included in my paid training course. So that's everything I put in place to get to the result of this case study. And it works. Feel free to apply it and see if it works for you too. The end of September, I was finally top one on my main keyword. That's a very, very good result. And it generated a lot of sales for the month of September, where I was making sales every day. Of course, advertising also comes in. But since I was the top one on the market, I was selling organically every day very easily. Here, I've actually shown the results of the Shopify market. I've managed to position myself on the German market for this keyword. As a result, there's less search volume, but it's really easy to position yourself because in markets like Germany, Italy and Spain, SEO, dropshipping and e-commerce aren't really advanced. They're not as nested as we are. And so with a niche store, you can easily position yourself and grab sales organically there too. You see, I set up my translation here. All of a sudden, I moved up in my positions, I got more traffic, I generated sales, and that was it. Next, in the rest of this video, I'm going to show you the power of setting up Google Shopping in a multi-market with a special application for add your Google Shopping, not only on the US market, as I did at the very beginning since that was my main market, but also come and make you paid sales with advertising on Germany, Italy, etc. So after four months work, I've achieved 10,000 euros in sales on this store, which shows that sales can come very quickly if you persevere and do a good job with the right skills and strategies. When I got my top one, what I was showing was that I was managing to make over 300 euros in sales a day. Of course, this was also at the end of the year, during the Q4 period, when you have a higher conversion rate and visitors are more eager to buy. And then I did my summary four months later, where I managed to make over 2,500 euros in monthly profits with over 5,000 euros in sales in September. So for the last few minutes, all I've been doing is showing you the results because it's all the effort I put in at the start over my first few months. And after three or four months, all the effort has paid off. Right now, I've got 10,000 of estimated monthly traffic on SEMrush. I'm top everywhere on my transactional keywords on Google when people search for my keyword. Now I was explaining that I'd met my main competitor on this niche on my Discord, which just goes to show how small the world is. And now we talk every day, every evening on Discord. So don't hesitate to join us on voice if you ever do. And here I'm showing the shop results, which show that it's earned me over 2000 euros a month over the last 30 days. The challenge here in October 
was to reach 10,000 euros a month. Next, I'd like to talk about profit. As usual, we're at around 30% profit on sales. So in concrete terms, month five, 10,000 euros spent, 5,100 euros profit, almost 50% profit even. I was at the Chiang Mai SEO event in Thailand, where I met a lot of French people there for an SEO event. It was huge, and I'd recommend this kind of event to you if you can afford it. Travel, meet people who make numbers, who have very good strategies to share with you. They give you value. You give them value too, of course, with Black Friday, which also happens to be the biggest period of the year for all e-tailers. So of course I was sharing my email marketing on Twitter at this time of year. And email marketing is something not to be neglected, as you can see here. Well, it wasn't on the case study store, but here it's on another big store I have. And I send out one email a day every time during this period. And it generates here, we see. And this is the whole Black Friday period on a single store with my emailing campaign that I apply to all my stores. Always the same one every year. I don't even renew it because I'm a bit lazy, but there you go. Then I share the failures a little. Then because I was top and I got bumped, I was top three. Well, that still gets me quite a bit of traffic, but there you go. To this day, I'm still top three, top four, and so that's SEO. But in the meantime, Google Ads, Google Shopping are performing just as well, as Google Shopping is hyper-stable, hyper-durable, and you can very well have good results thanks to advertising and just as safely, because SEO is often said to be a long-term thing, but in the end you just have to lose positions, and in the end you don't even make any more figures, even if it does make a bit of a difference. Thanks to Google Ads, I'm getting very, very good results. I'm doing 1K day every time during the month of November, December, and here I'm showing you the results of multi-feed shopping. As I told you about Shopify Market, I started doing Google Ads in Germany and was making over 3,000 euros in sales then, if we go down, we see that during Black Friday, I was on Koh Samui, taking advantage of the month of November and figuring it out like never before. I made over 20,000 euros in sales in month six. In fact, I did a little recap here at that time. It was November, of course. All my students, well, many of them, of course, not all of them, but they were starting to get the figures right. They were sharing their results with me with dashboards of $11,000, $12,000, $30,000 of sales shared in the Flex channel of my Discord. And there was the big value. I'd like to share with you the application I personally use to use Google Shopping Multifeed on different sales channels. And it's called Multifeed for Shopping. Here you can see the different steps involved in setting up this Multifeed, but I'm not going to go into too much detail here as this is something I'll be sharing in greater depth in the training course. In concrete terms, look at the results here in the States. I've made $20,000 in sales over the last 30 days. And in Germany, we've made $15,000 in sales, which is almost equivalent in these two markets, all thanks to multi-feed shopping. Then here we were in December. I'd reached 50,000 euros in sales. I've reached 100,000 euros in sales generated over the six months since the store was created. I'm also sharing how I've only spent 17,000 euros on Google Ads, that I had a very good return on investment. Here's the December summary, and in itself, here's how there's not much left to show apart from the dashboard for Flex. Here's a little tweet on the month of January, and to show you that I'm still making good numbers, even in the very slow months, I've made $17,000 in sales, and that's a lot of sales despite a lot of refunds, of course. Since I made a lot of sales in December, I'd like to thank you very much if you've made it this far, because you've gone through most of the video and you've learned a lot. I hope so. Anyway, as you can see, we're on a rather novel video format where I simply take all the relevant Twitter posts that I share publicly on my account and where I document all my strategies, quite simply because these are strategies that I continue to apply every day in all my stores and that still work. After that, it's important to know that half my income still comes from half my boutiques. So there are quite a few stores that are underperforming, but it's by doing a lot of mass marketing that you'll be able to find some nice nuggets. And even on the boutiques that are underperforming, well, it's still money that comes in automatically once you've managed to delegate the whole customer service process. It's something that can be done very easily for two or 300 euros a month and you can find someone full time to do it all for you in a quality way. And above all, not to hesitate to delegate all these tasks 
so that you can concentrate on the ones that are really going to make you a lot of money. After that, as you've seen, there are some strategies that I share with you where I don't necessarily go into great detail simply because the video is already quite long and it's easier for me to share it in video form on concrete cases, which is what I'm doing with the case study in question that I presented to you today, for example, where I filmed everything from A to Z and shared it with the members of my training course, which is hyper accessible. I don't earn money from this kind of online course. I just want to share as much value as possible with you. Of course, I do monetize it to a certain extent, but compared to this kind of store, given the figures it brings me, it's not thanks to training that I'm making the most money today. Don't hesitate to join if you want to set things up more easily, if you're having trouble doing your own research and applying what I'm suggesting. And if not, we can meet up on the Discord, which is totally free and where we're very present on voice chat to share when you're available.